Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with some brand new music, this track being Every Trace of Us from The Pineapple Thief. This is the second single from their album that comes out later this year called It Leads to This. <laughs> Reading comprehension is sometimes hard. Reading sometimes even harder. All right. Let's dive into this one. Every trace of us. See what's going on with the pineapple thief. I want to see the flames all bearing down on me. These it's so warm and inviting. And then we have this tension. Very crisp drum fill coming in here. Oh man. The bass absolutely filthy. We're in a nice seven right now. It's really interesting to listen to how flowy the melody is when the song is so disjointed. The whiplash emotionally is wild. So bright eyed. The wavy guitar, it, it reminds me of like memories, it's more ethereal, whereas we come to this section, it's more physical, it's more solid. Those light snare hits are so good. Yeah, so we have a 12-beat phrase here, which I can feel in both three bars of four and four bars of three. There's an ambiguity to the feeling of this whole section. It's really tough for me to figure out what I think is the intended feel and what's the, the polymetric idea. It's sort of just is time collapsing on itself. That's the second time they've lined up that gnarly guitar tone with the vocals. Yeah. 
Oh, it's over. Come on, man. I'm <laughs> getting into it. Ah. Uh. That's a solid pro rock track right there. They do some interesting stuff with it too. The song is it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous through its whiplash. It's 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 just in the moment. And I'm like listening to it as it's going on. I can make sense of stuff in that that second that I'm listening to it. But the minute I try to expand outside of that and try to figure out how everything works well with everything else, what it's trying to come together to say, what it's doing as a whole, I find it's in opposition to itself frequently in a way that I think works. I don't want to say that as a negative. They're certainly utilizing it as a tool in their composition to deliver an experience and possibly a thematic message but it's it's really difficult for me to to sit up here and say oh you know this is what the song means to me because <laughs> i don't really know uh, earlier on i talked about emotional whiplash right as the song begins it leads us into a little bit of a darker rock feel we have that that massive bass tone. It's just so good. I love that. This has just been a phenomenal week for bass tones. I, I don't think I've brought up bass so much in a week. And yeah, this just fits so well with that conversation. But then like the vocals come in. And they're bright eyed. It's beautiful. It's positive. But it's over quickly. The second half of this section moves into a really dark area. All of that brightness ripped out of the harmonic elements of the track. And then we go back to it, though. Our verses and even parts of our chorus are this flip-flop between absolute joy and elation and this darkness this sorrow almost a melancholy that washes over the song it is the de facto element of this track harmonically is the jumping back and forth between these I don't think there's any section in the track that really hones in on a specific emotion and says this is, well, the bridge maybe. The bridge is its own beast, though. I, I do kind of feel that a bit separate from the rest of the track. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But as far as the verse and the chorus go, the main idea behind it is this this back and forth, this constant whiplash between these highs and lows. It's difficult to get a read on what the song is aiming for because of that. I mean, it, obviously the intention is the whiplash, but what does that represent? What does that mean? I, I don't know based off of just this one listening experience. I, I'm sure the lyrics will help clue me in on something there. But it was disorienting. To begin with, uh, I mean, whiplash is definitely the right word for this. Metrically, it's a bit all over the place, too. It's it's in seven. You can certainly feel it in a seven, eight, in which case you're going to uh, have these harsh stops at the ends of ideas. One, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, and it just kind of like juts into there and we can look at it on these smaller frames but you're gonna have that that stumbling at the end of every line because the rift and idea and rhythmically from the drums it all sort of just abruptly stops and starts the loop again it is abrupt it, it just happens but if we take it a step back 
and look at it at 7, 4 and count half as fast, it actually lines up very well. The second half of it, starting from the and of 3, the, the midpoint between beats 3 and 4, is where that faster section flips into its, its rough transition and the rough loop back. And so the back half of it in 7-4, counting at half the speed, just means that the back half is mostly predominantly looking at off beats rather than down beats. And so it just feels like a funkier syncopated variation on what we were listening to originally. It really depends on your perspective whether this section feels fluid or jaggy. Jaggy? Jaggedy? That is not a usual usual word in my vocabulary. I don't know where that came from. But yeah, perspective is really important. How are you feeling this section? In fact, how are you feeling the whole song? I think the whole thing is in seven. And pretty much every section can be viewed either from this higher idea of looking at two bars collectively and feeling the alternation of accent points or looking at one bar really zooming in a bit and feeling this lurching forward at the end of every phrase. And they exist simultaneously. Again, it's kind of difficult to get a read on what the song is trying to do with this. Maybe, once again, it's about perspective the back actually if we extrapolate this to the back and forth of emotions instead of reading them as a back and forth of emotions we can read them as one collective idea maybe it is a mixture of emotions while doing something the whole concept of bittersweet comes to mind from this usually when i feel bittersweetness in music it is those two sounds collectively played simultaneously but this could just be the back and forth, hyper-focusing on one element and then the other. This takes us to the bridge. The bridge feels focused on instrumentation in a way the rest doesn't. The instruments are very vital, the way that they craft a section, the layering, moving from foundation to harmony to melody to atmospheric and ornamental ideas, just sort of building the song up. What the instruments are doing, their roles in the track, it's important during the verse and chorus as well. But to me, the atmosphere is the key there. It's all in servitude to how that moment of the song feels. And a lot of it is there to help support the vocal line, which I do feel has a bit of prominence in the uh, the mix as to be what most people's ears are going to gravitate towards. The bridge, though, hyper-focuses on the instrumentation, and thus we hear more complex instrumental lines. The drums take what was already a fairly busy drum part and adds in ghost notes and some extra bass kicks and just generally ramps it up quite a bit. The bass and guitar get some extra ideas, thrown in there much like the drums and it just complicates what they're doing. It's all done in a way that still flows. It doesn't become overly noodly in any way. But it does feel more complex and dense than where we were despite having one less instrument present. What's also present to me here is that we've shifted away fairly strongly from our seven uh, seven beat phrase. This is the only place. And we have shifted to a point that is polyrhythmic, and I could not place the home meter versus the polymetric or po polyrhythmic meter. No, polymetric meter. We have a new meter. <laughs> I can feel this very clearly in four. I can also feel it very clearly in three. And to keep things lined up properly, we only have 12 beats. So four bars of three beats or three bars of four beats. Three bar phrases are odd. It's, well, it's not only odd in that we just don't hear it too often, but three is also an odd number. It's not divisible cleanly in half. 
the halfway point is in the middle of a bar, which frequently means the middle of a phrase. That's not usually a good place to envision the start of something new. To cut something in half means the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half. And to put that in the middle of something else, it just it's not a great way to go about looking at music. So naturally, I want to say this is in 3-4 with four bar phrases. Or yeah, with a four bar phrase. That makes sense to me. The middle point is between the end of bar two and the beginning of bar one. It's the it's the actual end of something and beginning of something else. But for the longest time, I felt it in four. It took me a while to realize that there was a three pulse in here. It also is a point of cohesion. It is one of it is the only part of the track that doesn't feel like the end of the phrase lurches into the next, where there is a misstep. Everything in here, regardless of perspective, has fluidity and makes rhythmic sense, as well as a type of melodic flow. I, well, I guess more of a harmonic flow. Looking at the way that the chords move and them changing when you expect them to. As chaotic and a flurry that this bridge can become, it's also the one that makes the most sense to me. In a, in a weird way, it, this bridge reminds me of people who say that they work best under pressure. And that the song finds fluidity and uh, a singular vision of scope and emotion and just really hones in on one specific idea when it's the most chaotic, when there's the most stress and tension put into the feeling of it. But it ends up not feeling as wild as it is due to its depth. And it achieves this through a singularity of focus in the harmony and rhythm and pacing and structure and time signature. It is wild to me to think then as we come out of this and the song chills out quite a bit, the individual instruments themselves have less dense lines and overall looking at the song there is more spaciousness to it all and even the perceived tempo, the feeling of it based on how many notes are being played at any time sort of feels like it falls back as well. I don't know if we actually have a tempo change here. It just feels like it chills out a little bit. And yet this is where the song also feels the most tense because we move from those really big highs um, harmonically with the chords and shift back to those really dark feelings. It is the parts where the song is emo emotionally less sure of itself, but structurally more laid back. It's, it's this whole thing is full of contradictions musically, and I find it to be really interesting because of that. I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to bring up before I went into lyrics, and I can't remember what it was. Maybe when I'm reading the lyrics, it pop back up. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and read the lyrics, and we'll see what comes from that. Hmm. There aren't a lot of lyrics. And I don't really know how the lyrics, what I am picking up from them, relate to the music. The song is entirely negative. There's very few parts in here that feel positive at all. In fact, the very first lines of the track, which are said with that optimistic brightness, as I woke to see the flames all bearing down on me. Then we push into the dark side. These walls, they, are, they will be utterly destroyed within me. Like, none of this is positive? It's really weird to have a positive element in this track at all musically though i do want to mention there is a part where bruce sword of the band was on youtube and he said that this song came together rather quickly with him and gavin coming up with some of the bass ideas he came up with a verse they got the guitars in there uh, the bass came in through his thing in 
and uh, the keyboarders came in and put some stuff on there. And the very last sentence of this story is, the words came later. They do kind of feel that way to me. These are lyrics that work well within the meter, but feel very disjointed from the emotional side of the song. Everything in here is about pain within that is invisible to others. The chorus says, can't you see them? They cut the desperate figure through my heart. Can't you see them? They're taking over, tearing every trace of us apart. So let them be, just let them, or just leave them. Verse 2 mentions that he's just going to lay down, let them come to him, and put all of this pain in his head to rest. It's about giving in to the darkness because no one else can help you. No one else even sees that you're surrounded and blinded by it. And being eroded away from the inside out by it. It, to me, is about dealing with mental illness. It's about dealing with stresses. It's about all the invisible factors that weigh down on us. But the song, lyrically, is about giving in to them. Not trying to fight them because it's too tiring, possibly. The music has elements of hope in it that just aren't reflected in here at all. And my entire read of the bridge and its emotional resonance compared to the rest of the track isn't really reflected in here either. It's one of those songs where the lyrical elements and the musical, uh, musical elements just seem to be very distinct, which is fine. There's a lot of music like that. I do feel like it was a bit of a missed opportunity, though, given how unique and interesting the musical themes are to not lean into them lyrically as well and really bring this song into a, a strong thematic cohesion and elevate it to something more than music for lyrics or lyrics for some music. There's also the chance that maybe I'm just missing something in the lyrics and it does connect a bit better than I think, but for the Pineapple Thief uh, maybe my expectations were just a little bit higher based on stuff I've heard in the past. I don't know. Musically, I'm on board, though. Those are my thoughts of The Pineapple Thief's Every Trace of Us. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. You enjoy this? Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? or Anything like that? Put it down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, ways to, support, ways to submit special selections. Uh, you can find the schedule. All sorts of stuff is down there. Go ahead and check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one. We do have one more new song that I want to look at today, so we'll have a 6 o'clock video, EST anyways, that we don't normally have tomorrow morning. Morning for me, again, EST. <laughs> 10 a.m. EST. Be sure to check out the two videos we have. I have planned. Why are you talking about me in the plural? I have planned for tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to do a theme thoughts on sludge metal, and uh, we're going to check out my some of my favorite albums from last year. All right. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.